Hello and welcome to The American Rancher. I'm Pam Minnick. This week we've got another great story featuring Bronvy cattle and we're going to talk with a number of producers that are consistently seeing a very balanced set of profit drivers from the breed that they can measure. These characteristics demonstrate the versatility and viability of Bronvy cattle as a solid foundation to a beef herd. A little later, we'll get to travel west to Utah State University and look into the scientific research by Dr. Matthew Garcia. Dr. Garcia will join us on the program and provide us with carcass research on Bromby cattle, as well as some other interesting facts about the breed. Putting together profit drivers, that's our show today, and we're glad you joined us. So stay tuned, we'll be right back. Welcome back to The American Rancher. We're gonna talk about what we call profit drivers, or traits that lead to profitability and how they relate to Bronby cattle. If you simply built your beef program objectively without concern for any status quo marketing, you'd likely base it on the straight performance traits that put money in your pocket. Profit drivers is our subject today on this episode of Bronby Stories. Profit drivers in the cattle business can be described as those traits that stockmen have identified as a proven building block of profitability. Through the years, beef producers have learned and continue to learn to move with the market cycles that are inherent in it and make the best choices to steer their individual programs in a profitable manner. Profit drivers are different for the different stages of beef production. For example, feed efficiency and yield grade are primary profit drivers in the feed yard. On the rail, carcass merit, both in quality, grade, and yield, along with marketability, take priority. And back home in the pasture, fertility, growth, and replacements are some key profit drivers. Today we'll explore the subject of profit drivers through Braun V Cattle. Well, I think one thing that Bromby can do for the commercial cattlemen today that some of the other breeds can't, Bromby will bring in additional growth like the other breeds do when you crossbreed. But in addition to that, if you want to retain your heifers, the heifers from the Bromby's are going to be excellent mother cows. And the biggest benefit to Bromby other than their carcass is their temperament. They are the easiest handling cattle that I've ever had in my pastures, and that's been over 60 years of having cattle of several different breeds. And the Bromby are much easier to handle and to work. Also, the females are really excellent mothers to, to their calves. They stay productive well into their teen years of uh, and very, very productive at that age. I've got several cows that's 15 years old and, and older, They're still in, in production and calve every year, and are still raising very good calves. Uh, and that's a, that's a plus to the commercial man because you, you, you don't spend as much time and money in replacing your herd. So that's an additional benefit of the Bromby cattle is their longevity. Well, I think the beef industry is gonna be moving toward reducing cost and, and feeding cattle and, and Bromby's are very feed efficient, number one. And number two, I think the industry is gonna be moving forward and looking at more improved carcasses in the animals. And Bromby has traditionally had a very good carcass and uh, there's many breeders in this breed that are concentrating on improving the quality of the carcass. So I feel like that there's a, a great future for Bromby and I think we're kind of ahead of the curve a little bit you might say, in carcass quality and feed efficiency. Bromby will improve your bottom line. Most cattlemen agree that the number one profit driver at the ranch is undoubtedly fertility. In a commercial setting, beef producers must have cattle that bring home a live calf each year. Another profit driver that comes into play is longevity, which is directly related to replacements. If a cow gives 11 to 15 years of productive service instead of 7 to 10, that's almost twice the production. 
if she also gives you replacement females as good or better than she is during her lifespan, that's double good. The same for bulls that last two, three, or four extra years and can sire market calves and replacement females. This can easily be overlooked in the wake of market emotion. Bronvi consistently excel in fertility, longevity, and their uncommon ability to adapt to most any environment and thrive. Harlan Duskett imported the first Bronvi into the United States in 1984. He was in Switzerland at the time and looking for outcross Simmental genetics when he came across the Bronvi and saw that they were quite special. The Bronvies was a gift from God without a doubt because they had feed conversion, they had milk, and they had cutability that was next to none. We won quite a few carcass contests on a national level. You know, some breeds you got no front quarters and all back quarters, but the Bronvies had a strong play thing. They had four good quarters and kept them that way. Chris and Nisha Smith of Rosebud, Arkansas, have marketed their Bronvie sired calves through the local and regional livestock markets for several years. In 2017, they looked into the idea of feeding out some of their calf crop for the first time. Some of the people that was buying our um, cattle when we would take them to the market was feeding them and having real good results. So we had a full load we could try for ourselves, so we tried it. They was Bronvie influenced steers. Cattle were in the yard, um, finished at about six months. Um, we went ahead and gritted them and was, was real pleased with the results. Chris and Nisha saw their first pen of Bronvie sired calves off of mixed cows mark an average daily gain of 3.45 and convert at 5.33. The pen graded just over 61% choice or higher with one hitting prime. It was a good first time experience and they made money. In fact, they liked it so well they are shipping more cattle to feed out this year and will sell others at auction. Thus, they are diversifying their marketing program. Marbling is definitely a genetic trait. The Brumbies, they had a lot of marbling. Majority of people go for looks instead of results. Feed efficiency, but also adaptability with it. Because feed efficiency without adaptability isn't complete. Adaptability under a wide range of conditions, from the luscious feed to the short grass. They crossed with any breed is what, they, what made them successful. They'd bring everybody to the central point of cutability and feed conversion. Feed efficiency is a primary profit driver in the feed yard, yet feed efficiency can be brought back to the cow herd through breeding. Over time, an efficient cow herd can be developed that can perform on 10, 15, or 20 percent less feed. This is a tremendous profit driver. Feed efficiency drives value like no other trait in the beef industry. If you've got cattle in the feed yard, average daily gain is important. If you're killing cattle on the rail, ribeye size and marbling is important. And we do measure those things and, and see a lot of value in those. However, feed efficiency is something that goes from the mother cow to the pasture cattle to the feed yard cattle. And if you really want feed efficiency to inject into your cow herd, inject into your uh, calf crop, you have to do it through the bull. When I think about what Bronvi can do for a producer today is if you're looking for something that will produce quality half-blood commercial females, your Bronvi bull will provide you with a genetic base second to none. The half-blood Bronvi female will provide you the factory to produce 
the endpoint animal that you're looking for, whether you put them on a Charlay animal or, a, or an Angus or a Gelvy, uh, the Bronvi animal will, will provide that genetic base in any commercial operation. Bronvi genetics bring producers a base that they can work with and with good management develop a set of cattle that are efficient, adaptable, growthy, and will grade and yield well at finish. These are all profit drivers that are going to lead to monetary gain. There is more Bronvi stories ahead. You're watching The American Rancher. Welcome back to The American Rancher and our Bronvi Stories episode. We saw in our first segment that Bronvi influenced cattle are delivering great fertility, feed efficiency, carcass merit, good temperament, and a host of other profit drivers as seen by the cattlemen who raised them. Now we're going to look into some scientific research on these cattle as we welcome Dr. Matthew Garcia of Utah State University to today's program. Bromby have developed a sound reputation for carcass merit dating back to the mid-1980s when they first entered the U.S. and won repeated carcass contests. Through the years, this profit driver remains a key characteristic of the breed. This has led to the breed gaining distinction and marketability under a number of GRID and NHTC programs. Dr. Matthew Garcia, a geneticist at Utah State University, has conducted research on Bromby cattle for a number of years. In one study, he compared Bromby with Simmental and Charlay breeds for carcass characteristics. Did a PhD in Washington State in genetics. Uh, then I, I actually went on to uh, U.S. Mark um, in Clay Center, Nebraska, and that's where I kind of started my carcass um, genetics, uh, disease genetics work uh, while I was a postdoc there. So I was there for two years and you know our main focus was trying to correlate you know the genetics of BRD, pink eye, foot rot with carcass quality and yield uh, in some some cattle up there and the, the unique thing up there was that the cattle we were using up there was the GP8 population which was the tropically adapted uh, Boss Taurus group which was like B F1 Beef Master, F1 Brangus, F1 um, Romo Sinuano, F1 Bonsmara. Well, the, the unique thing was when I went to LSU, that was the same crossbred herd I was using for my research down there. And one of the reasons we started doing BRD research down there was when I got down there, the cattle had already been bred um, for another project to some Angus bulls. And we had just a train wreck of BRD that year. Hmm. And, you know, carcass quality, you know, really suffered as well. You know, we had, we had some problems. You know, so I was really looking at, you know, how can we look at this from an applied standpoint, you know, uh, you know, improve our productivity in the feedlot, improve our disease resistance without sacrificing, you know, carcass, you know, feedlot, uh, feed efficiency, things like that. My herdsman had that herd uh, that he'd been using Bronby bulls on. And he would send, you know, his, some of his calves up, didn't send his females, which I figured out why later on, but he was sending steer calves up to the feedlot with ours in the load, and they always made it through the feedlot process. They always graded, you know, high choice. You know, their, their feed efficiency was great. You know, they were just blowing our cattle out of the water. So I started asking Mike, you know, about, you know, where did you get these bulls? You know, what are they? Because I, honestly, I had never heard of Bronby cattle before I'd come up there. So I, I convinced administration at that point. So I said, well, why don't you let me do a crossbreeding program? Let me use a three-breed crossbreeding program you know, so I can not only continue to send cattle to the feedlot to get our carcass research done or BRD research done, but I can also generate some females that are going to be adapted in this system. You know, we just basically divided that herd into thirds and put our three different bull breeds out there. And that herd traditionally had been about, you know, 65 to 70 percent conception rates, you know, which isn't, isn't that great. Well, this first year we did this project, just through selection and some other things, our, our conception rate went up to about 92%. And the first thing that we noticed when we weaned, traditionally on that herd, that the weaning weight had been about 500 and 550, 575 pounds. 
that first year that we incorporated those breeds in, our weaning weight went up to about 615 pounds. Weaning weights between the three breeds were not significantly different. Hip heights were significantly different. The Bromvy breed was actually, didn't have that huge frame as the Simmental and the, and the Charlotte, but the weaning weights were not different. I mean, they're compacting that onto a, a more moderate frame. Birth weights across the board were about 83 pounds. So that Bronvi was more efficient at packing that on. And we got producers just so interested, you know, well, yeah, they look great on the, on the hoof. What are they going to look like when take that hide off? Well, we started getting our information back. And we had sent some Angus calves up there, too, just to kind of, kind of as a control, because we knew what the Angus calves were going to do. Well, when we got that carcass information back, that crossbred herd had traditionally been about 50, 55% choice when they, when they got up there. When we got our carcass data back that first year, we were almost 80%. And there was no significant difference in marbling score, quality grade between the Bronvi Simmental Charlotte and the Angus. They had all graded similar to the Angus. The difference was the Bronvi calves had a significantly bigger ribeye than all the breeds combined. And we're, and we're talking about five, what is it, five square inches of ribeye difference between them and some of these other ones. So I'm trained as a molecular genetic, so I want to see what mutations did these, these animals have that were making them different. One thing we found when we started doing, doing our work was they had very similar genetic mutations when it came to birth weight, weaning weight, as the Charlet, Angus, Simmental groups did. But when we started looking at the carcass side, you know, marbling, you know, they're, they're a great choice just like the Angus and everybody else, so there wasn't any difference there. But remember, the ribeye was numerically very statistically significant from those animals to the other breeds. We started looking at the genetic side, of the, the raw DNA. We found that they actually had a different set of genetic mutations at, at certain markers for ribeye area that was really driving that ribeye size. And I'm not saying those are the only markers accounted for, but you know the Bromby breed brought some very good DNA, some very good DNA markers to those breeds that probably weren't present in those breeds before or hadn't been segregated or you know, weren't you know, really being selected for in those breeds. And now you've reintroduced them. So, I mean, part of that, you know, you could say hybrid vigor and crossbreeding. Another part of it, you can say, hey, we incorporated genetics that really kind of brought us back to functionality. It's worth repeating. Bronvi compare well with most every other breed, but they also cross well with Continental, English, and Brahmin-based cattle and bring desirable traits to the mating. You know, we always tell our commercial buyers that, uh, what are you looking for? Because we've really got everything they're looking for, whether it's the mothering ability or a calm natured animal but we're really looking for a cow that's gonna wean off a calf that's healthy and that's got good growth ability and ready to go and feed, but at the same time is already showing that muscle and that growth. It's 100 plus degrees out here today and you'll find these cows out grazing or you can come back in the winter, they'll still be out here eating in the cold. They'll adapt to any situation anywhere in the country. She's easy to work with. They love their babies. They're there with plenty of milk. That's the secret. And they just work on anything. And that's what I love about the Bronby cow. In terms of marketability, Bromby are proving that they are cattle that can target niche markets in a profitable manner. They are an ideal animal to raise as NHTC, which is the door to both domestic and foreign niche markets. It is proven that good temperament is not only a nice thing when it comes to interacting with the cattle, it is a telling profit driver also. High-strung cattle are problematic. They don't perform as well as those with a good temperament, from breeding all the way through feeding. Don't let anyone kid you. I've got some brown bay cows and I'm in the process of trying to find more brown bay cows to where I get to 100% brown bays. I like the disposition of the cows. They're, I call them old man cows because they're easy to handle. And I like the way the cows milk. Our conception rate's good and the longevity of them cows, are just, they seem to just go on forever. 
Bromby cattle carry the profit drivers that work well for stockmen. When you come to the point this year when you want and need to add fresh genetics, remember, when profit matters, Bronvi is the choice. We'd like to thank all of our guests for a great show. Bronvi cattle are proving themselves as a breed that delivers profit drivers. Cattlemen, it's a great time to freshen your genetics, and there's room for you around the Bronvi campfire. For more information about these cattle, visit Bronvi.org. That's all the time we have today. To find out more about us, visit our website, theamericanrancher.com, or connect with us on Facebook. I'm Pam Minnick for the entire American Rancher team. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.